9 and 10 News Focus, brought to you by Northern Michigan Digital, providing solutions for your digital advertising needs. Let Northern Michigan Digital help you cut through the noise in the digital market space. Here's your host, Kevin Essebaggers. Welcome, and thanks for listening to 9 and 10 News Focus. So 2013, actually in the winter, it was January 2013, was the lowest uh, out of 100 years of monthly records that was ever recorded. We were doing programs that fall with the Corps of Engineers on low lake levels. There are definitely problems at low lake levels. It was impacting the shipping industry, uh, boat launch ramps were, were not able to be used, uh, just a number of issues. Uh, people's docks had to go out a half mile or more in certain places in northern Michigan. And it was, you know, we were even saying, what if it even goes lower than it was? And we were like, we can't go there yet. <laughs> that obviously didn't happen to Great Lakes water levels. We're hearing Mark Breederland from Michigan Sea Grant and MSU Extension. Levels on the lakes are at, near, or above monthly all-time highs, and the situation is not getting better as we head into the spring melt-off. We'll be talking to 9 and 10 Chief Meteorologist Tom O'Hare in a bit about what's happening with water levels and a new project he's working on. But first, let's hear from Mark Breederland, who says just seven years ago, no one imagined this would be a problem. I had looked at the uh, records from the 1960s when we had had some previous lows, and it took about you know four to five years, and it reached the kind of the long-term average after the low in the uh, 64 actually was. And so I kept saying, I know the system can rebound. I don't know how quick it can rebound, and now it rebounded twice as fast as we saw in the 60s, and uh, just an incredible rebound. Um, for the last seven years, and we've reached the now all-time record highs in certain months of the year for the lakes. Of course, conditions had to be just right to get us to this point so quickly, and our Great Lakes levels aren't the product simply of local weather conditions. Record wetness, wetness, and wetness. You know, realtors talk about location, 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 and it's the precipitation inputs that have come into the basin um, it seems like we're getting more moisture from the Gulf of Mexico area, but um, we have just had uh, wetness, maybe not all at once. Uh, I know Michigan did set their uh, like 24 hour all time record in, uh, it was in Mason County and it was in July of 2019. It was an uh, incredible amount in 24 hours, like 13 inches or something. But um, you know, it's been this continual wetness for the last, uh, say, five years. And so um, the National Weather Service and uh, NOAA kind of charts all that, and that's what's driving it. And when we were dealing with the low lake levels in 2012, we had extra high evaporation. Now, evaporation is kind of a complex issue, but you know, it's precipitation versus evaporation leaving the basin minus what kind of goes through the system. And we had really high evaporation in the fall of 2012. We lost an extra foot of water on Lake Michigan here on it, which is an incredible amount. So the right conditions, the water would have been warm enough and we would have got some cold uh, air coming over and evaporated that water out of the system. And uh, it's um, right now we've been very flat with the uh, evaporation factor since uh, last summer and fall. We just didn't get real strong evaporation. So, so precipitation and evaporation are the big drivers, and we have good indicators of what's heading out of the system through the uh, St. Clair River and down through the rest of the Great Lakes. They're all high as well. Beaches, bridges, parks, roads, and homes are all being threatened by waves and erosion as a result of the high levels. And Mark says ice can be as bad as waves when it comes to creating damage. Ice starts in along Lake Michigan or Lake Huron and kind of forms out for the first uh, 20, 30 feet and it kind of goes up and down the shoreline. That happens before it would ever freeze out uh, towards the middle. And when that ice forms there, then that allows that to take the brunt of the wave energy. So the ice is uh, uh, 20, 30, 40 feet offshore and the waves hit that and that takes it and that really buffers the shoreline. Now when ice leaves is really another key part for, evap for uh, erosion because um, if it leaves, it breaks up and it starts floating around, you get a big windstorm, it can just hammer the shore and it's really like a, a locomotive train coming at you. There's nothing you can do to stop it and you can just scour the shoreline. 
But if it heats up quick, that shore ice or even the other lake ice could go away quickly. And uh, that's exactly what you would want to kind of protect your shoreline. So these are all things beyond our control, but it's uh, uh, interesting to note what, what really helps us. And we have been very low on ice and we could use some shore ice. I'm sure there'll be some coming still this winter, but um, it, is, it is low. We've already had a, a good hammering in December and January that we typically would have had some shore ice to protect places. And I wish I had some better news for those impacted by the lake levels, but according to Mark, all people can do is wait. Um, uh, be thinking about, you know, this is kind of one of those situations where our cities, townships, villages, and homeowners have to have a rainy day fund. And uh, rainy day may turn out to be high lake levels fund to re-engineer, redo some stuff. Um, the lake levels will come down in the future. They are cyclical. They are not going to stay up forever. We don't know what year they're going to come down, but um, we can kind of say with pretty good certainty they're going to be very high in 2020. And uh, we can just hope for good evaporation in the fall, kind of gives a little lower start next year. And if the precipitation inputs slow down a little bit, that would be really big. But um, it's uh, we're going to have to uh, kind of uh, ride the ride the storm through. Before we get too overwhelmed with the sheer scope of this issue, I want to bring in 9 and 10 Chief Meteorologist Tom O'Hare, who is working on our long-term coverage of rising lake levels. And Tom, this is a huge issue. It's kind of hard to get your head around all of the effects of these high water levels, but I guess we'll just start at the beginning. How did we get here? And really relatively quickly, just a few years ago, we were talking about really low lake levels. How did this happen so yeah, fast? It was hard to believe back in... Uh, the fall and winter of 2012 and then spring and we'll say winter still of 2013, we had the record low, all-time record low in uh, January 2013. And are we at an all-time record high now or how close are we? No, we're at a monthly high for January of 2020 so far. Now, surprisingly, of all the Great Lakes, Lakes Michigan Huron did not reach record levels last year at all. Came close, but not quite there. All the other Great Lakes did. So lots of moisture out there. Lots of moisture coming out of the skies and some evaporating back in the atmosphere, some not. And so the combination of what's been going on the last year in comparison to other areas, well, we're finally catching up, I would say. So the rain's been coming down. We've had the cold winters at times, so some evaporation going on. But first of all, let's go back to the last couple of years. Yeah, 2013, record low levels. And then we slowly started building up the rainfall through Lake Superior, the, the Great Lakes Basin of all the watersheds. Water keeps on falling down, falling down, and then it keeps on adding up. It's not going out as quickly and just adds up, adds up, adds up. And then over the last three, five years, we're talking about just a trend of wet weather across the Great Lakes region. I mean, something we haven't seen in, in ages or like a hundred years. When we did set the record high level, uh, was it 86, 87? 86, yes. Uh, I don't remember there being nearly as much shoreline damage as we're seeing right now. Was it just a case of it just kind of quickly spiked and went back down back then? And exactly, that's what did happen. You would normally think a high level water level would happen, say, early to midsummer, like most of the Great Lakes do, but ours happens to be in October which is kind of odd, but it's just a little bit higher than our July all-time record high. Now, we came close to that this last year, but we'll probably get there this year. Good chance of that last, at least. So this, uh, this event is obviously lasting longer than when the record was set, and we've seen already you know, some homes falling into the Great Lakes, which isn't funny, but I, it's just so uh, amazing to see something like that happen. Uh, this is going to continue. This uh, relatively quickly ramped up, but it looks like it's not going to quickly ramp down because we're starting 2020 so high already. Right, and that's the odd thing. Typically, the, the lake goes down a good five to seven inches just in a normal cycle between summer and winter. Uh, this fall, this I mean, winter, both have not dropped off much at all. And we're starting off 2020 at record highs already. The forecast through at least July is new records every single month. So by the time we get to say July, we're essentially within like an inch or two of the all time records right there. So we're talking each, each month, basically six inches above the record already, or I should say six inches above, uh, yeah, sorry, excuse me, the current record mm -hmm. out there for March, 
for April, for May, for June. July is where we might be right now. The forecast is about three inches above the record. And that point would be roughly one inch off the all time record. Now people say, well, it's only an inch or two. Oh, well, that's the point. You go up an extra inch throughout the entire water basin. There's that much moisture to move around that much more water. It can erode more soil. It's higher up. It just keeps on digging it down. And say, if you have big storms blowing on through, they just dig and dig and dig and take down more and more soil. So you see the bluffs, you've seen pictures I'm sure over the last couple of weeks of that last uh, six months or so. Some houses look fine. They're hundreds away from the bluff and all of a sudden it's at their doorstep now. Mm -hmm. So just keep on taking it down. The problem is it's not going to stop this year. Probably last the entire year into early next year, at least early next year as well. Yeah, some dramatic pictures of, of homes on bluffs. Uh, but also when we're talking about a matter of inches, you know, a couple inches here, a couple inches there in, in level, that can make a big difference horizontally, right? So that an, an inch high more of water could mean that the lake then goes five feet further inland. Right, exactly. Depends on the slope between the water and say, it's basically a beach. Most beaches are pretty shallow. I have a slow, a low slope. So it goes up one, one inch of water level might meet 10 feet of shoreline. And so that makes a huge difference. One inch, two inch here and there. It's hard to believe that we've changed five feet plus since 2013. That's yeah. pretty incredible in just so so little years. And this is what we get when we go up five feet in that amount of time. Uh, we heard from Mark Breederland from the uh, Michigan Sea Grant who, who said, all we can do is wait. That's all we can do. There's really no solution. But I'm going to ask you from a meteorological standpoint, uh, what can the weather do to help? What can start the cycle going back down right. for lake levels? The key thing is just fewer storms, less moisture coming off the Gulf of Mexico, basically more, if any storms come through, have them come from the West Coast. There's typically less moisture, say Alberta Clipper in the wintertime, might drop a little bit of snow, has little moisture with it. But if we get these big storms developing down towards say Detroit, or at least in the central Midwestern states, they pull up all this moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, some perhaps even the Atlantic Ocean, hard to believe, but it comes that far to this one big cycle cyclone and drops it across our basin. It continues adding up. So if things just suddenly dry out quickly and we don't get any big storms, nothing major between now and July, we may not reach those record levels. But the trends are not favoring that at all. Everything indicates a wet spring. We've got plenty of snow out there right now. And the fact that we're, we're finally getting some cold air, so it's helping to evaporate some of the moisture off the Great Lakes, but it's, it maybe might be a little bit too little too late. So it'd be nice to have some ice out there on the shorelines to help reduce the amount of impact of the water levels hitting the shoreline during the wintertime. But the question is what happens when things start melting? How much more damage would occur if there was no ice there? Because the ice will mm -hmm. do damage to the shoreline too. Sure, yeah, uh, ice is just hard water. Uh, so what I'm hearing from you is uh, it matters where our storms are gonna be coming from and they're gonna be coming from the wrong places if we wanna see water levels go down. Right. They're gonna get that moisture and that's like from the Gulf and the Atlantic, and that's the opposite of what we need. Right, exactly. And uh, I know a lot of people want to do, still do some snowmobiling and skiing, but to get the big snowfall amounts, you still need to get the big storms. Typically, that's Gulf of Mexico moisture right there. Hmm. And uh, yeah, you might want things for certain reasons, but in the long term right now, we're looking at the water levels and they are going up and there's not a big relief out there in the next year or two, probably. So I, I probably can't ask you to make a prediction of when things are gonna start going down. That's kind of, a, that's an extremely long-term forecast, it sounds like. Yeah, exactly. And, and the basic estimate is that we're in the middle of at least a five or 10 year wet period. Oh, wow. Okay. Right, so it's like, if we're that wet already and we're staying in this pattern, I mean, last year we set the new all-time record for the state for the rainiest 24 hour period. Uh, 12, almost 13 inches of rain in one 24 hour period. That was in Mason County, right? Yes. Yeah. The old record I think was eight inches. Yeah. I mean, we destroyed the old record. So yes, it does happen. And just one big storm could add up a couple inches on the Great Lakes. So that's how important these storms are. And spring, as we know, tend, can, can tend to get a bit of violent out there in terms of storms. So we'll have to wait and see how things truly develop. But the latest estimates, conservative normal numbers, if we go on the normal pattern between now and summer, 
will reach the same highest levels of last year, uh, basically in mid-April. Okay. So we get to so, April, we'll be already at the highest points of last year. Right. Which then, caused all that and damage. Go, and go up from there. Right. And go up, up probably another, looks like uh, two to six inches after that. Okay. Well, I know you're watching this closely. Um, the, the listener can't see this, but you're sitting here with charts and graphs in front of you. So yeah, there's I know, so much information. I know that you're, uh, you're into this. Uh, tell us about uh, your coverage of this issue uh, going forward on, on 9 and 10 News. Well, basically every last Monday of the month, uh, Corey Ekins and I will be looking into what's been changing. The first episode's coming out at the end of this month. We're talking about how we really got here. I mean, how do we go from levels so low to so high, and what are you seeing out there? I guess there's some good news. There is some uh, ice formation right now along some lake shores, but again, we're getting the cold air right now, but it's minimal. So we're going to talk about how we got here, and we're looking for the next few months and how bad things could get uh, later in the year. Yeah, and see really how it is impacting people who uh, not only live along the Great Lakes, but uh, but recreate. And uh, I mean, if you have a boat, you may not your marina might not be open right. this year because they, the water's up over, over the dock. So there's lots of impacts, and uh, you guys will be yes. kind of taking a different angle every, every time. Right? Exactly, Rick. And I, I, have a, I know someone up north, up in the UP, on, on, on Lake Huron, and uh, their entire uh, boat, not launch, I want to say a boat house, mm-hmm. loosened up and went into the middle of the bay. So one of the things were still open up in December. They had to go tow it up and tow it up towards shoreline. So it's still not in the middle of the bay, but it's towards the edge of the bay. And they're hoping when things finally re, re, you know, unfreeze, they can finally move it back towards shore and take it apart. Something that they never imagined they'd have to worry about. No, but here exactly. we are. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. And thanks to Joe Busick, who works to bring podcasts to a new level. Thank you for listening to 9 and 10 News Focus. I hope you'll join me again as I look at issues in the news affecting northern Michigan. 9 and 10 News Focus, brought to you by Northern Michigan Digital, helping you meet your digital marketing needs.